Hi there, I'm Melanie Phillips of the Maduri Method and I'm here with the incredible Vikram. Vikram is an entrepreneur, he's a restaurateur, he has three incredible Indian restaurants in Vancouver metropolitan area in British Columbia. Uh, he's a public speaker and more than any of those things and any of those accomplishments, I've come to know Vikram as just a beautiful human being. So, namaste and... Namaste, namaste. Thank namaste. you very much. Namaste everybody. Um, you know, you say beautiful human being, I mean, I think every human being is beautiful. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter, uh, you know, of your caste or your creed or where you come from. I think the fact that we are human being and we are alive every day is, uh, is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit more about that. that. How did you come to that perception of seeing humans as beautiful, of seeing other people just like yourself? Well, you know, I grew up in, in India, so uh, just seeing people uh, living their lives the way it was given to them, you know, um, the karma that brought to you here, uh, and then living within your means and, and having that life saying, okay, this is what is given to me and I'm going to make the most out of it, uh, you know, has, has resonated with me and my uh, feelings of like, okay, well, this is what I was born with, this is what I was given and you know, yes, you work hard and you, you remain focused, but sometimes, you know, you just, that's what, those are the cards you're dealt with, then you play the best game you can out there, right? And is that your personal philosophy, to really just make the best of the life that you have? It is my, not only my philosophy, I mean, I, I principally believe in that, that, you know, you should have a focus. I mean, there's a word called drishti in, in, in Hindi, which means a focus. So you should always have that focus to say, I want to do this, I want to accomplish this. But... Whatever is given to you at the end of the day, whatever happens, is part of your life. Uh, your legacy should be that people know you as a great human being. People should know you that you were respectful to others, you were kind to each other, and most importantly, you were a good human being. And that is what I want to live by. Right. And that, that to me is the essence of yoga. Is, is being, you know, the Dalai Lama says my religion is kindness. Yes. And I think, uh, you know, meditation, all the asana, pranayama, all these practices are wonderful tools, but if at the end of the day you're not a kind and loving human being, none of it really matters. No amount of yoga, no amount of breathing exercises will help you if you <laughs> actually don't believe in it. Yeah. You need to practice that feeling of calm and collected and not going to hurt anybody. Uh, extremely important to uh, maintain that level of balance in your life. And I think that is what the focus of your own life should be. And if you choose not to do it, then I'm fine with it. I believe that this is my calling in life, my purpose in life, and that's what I would love to do. So how do you, when obstacles come up and arise in life, how would you direct people or guide people? What is your best advice for dealing with obstacles on the path? You know, a river's, a river's goal is to reach the ocean. And so when it flows from the top, it meets the ocean no matter what. And it has lots of obstacles in the way. So either it goes around it, or it goes above it, or it goes below it, but it gets to the ocean again. And that's what your life should be. Your life should be like a moving river constantly. You should not be like a, a lake that's stagnant. You should be like a river that's constantly moving because a moving river is fresh of water, fresh of life. A pond or a lake can be stagnant. And, and so life should be like a moving river. And I say cuisines are the same way. Music is the same way, you know. These are things that constantly move and evolve. And did you always know you wanted to be a chef? Was that that dharma? Was that in you? Did you know that? <laughs> I, I actually I actually wanted to be a Bollywood actor. <laughs> and my father said to me, no son of mine is going to become an actor. So guess what happened? I said, okay, well then I should become a chef. Because when at 5.30 the curtains are drawn, I am performing mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So I just told my father the other day, I said, Papa, for all your talk about, no, 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 I don't want my son to become an actor, I am acting every day at 5.30 when the doors are open, when you're in the kitchen, you're acting through your food, you're acting through what you're pr producing to, to people and, and talking and interaction and making them feel welcomed and loved and, you know, come and have some chai with me, come and hang out with me. That's all at, at the end of the day, you know, you've, you've got some friends coming over and you're just hosting them. 
Right. I love this. So you've created your stage, uh, your restaurants, and the other platforms in, in the world, and you're, uh, you seem to me the epitome of the gracious host. You know, if I'd called the restaurant Taj Mahal, or if I'd called it Cuisine of India, then it doesn't matter. But if you're going to put your name on it and say, this is my name, that's my last name, you are have better make sure that you welcome everybody with utmost love and care. But most importantly, it is also paying gratitude towards the food that's given to you. I mean, you know, that chicken or that eggplant or that potato dies so you can live. So giving gratitude to your food and blessing it with your own uh, positive energy is, I think, the most important part of eating. Eating should not be just because you want to fill up yourself. Eating should be paying gratitude towards that that animal or that that vegetable that has died so that you could survive or live. And that's such a, an important piece in my Ayurvedic practice working with clients. Everyone wants to know, like, what do we, what's the food list, what's appropriate for my dosha? And I really try to communicate with people the importance of it's not just what you eat, but how you eat, the level Correct. of consciousness. Can you speak to that a little bit as far as uh, when you're cooking, when you're preparing foods, what are you thinking, feeling, what are you bringing into the energy of that food? So, you know, in India, when we, when we, uh, when I grew up, you know, grandmothers and mothers would spend hours and hours in time cooking. And so they would make one masala at a certain time, and then they would put the spices in it at a certain time, and then they would spend time cooking the food. And the cooking of the food was full of love full of passion, taking, nurturing your child or your family member that are coming in. So, and I, th I really do believe that it's not one food item that you can say is uh, better for you or better. There is a whole science of Ayurveda that tell, tells you, eat this with this, eat this with this, and there's, you know, and, and that has been around for thousands of years. When I cook, I just cook from my heart. I have never cooked because I need to tone this down or tone this up. I, I just say, this is what I love eating. My palate, this is what I enjoy eating. I'm not going to eat food that is not uh, tasty for my palate. And that's what I enjoy doing. So um, my form of indulgence is purely just feeling the love and the passion in the food. How amazing. Especially in a time in our culture where there's so much uh, people having issue with food or uh, constricting and restricting foods and cutting things out of their diet and not wanting to. It's, we've gotten to a place where there's so many allergies and so many people are restricting because they think um, they're trying to do the right thing by not eating this, not eating that. But I love your, your view of whole, bringing back the wholeness. That's the yoga, the yoking, right? The union of, it's, it's all divine. Correct. Um... When somebody says, I'm, I'm cutting this out or cutting that out, it's, it's, you're not cutting it out, you just need to reduce it down. So if there is less of salt you're eating or less of carbohydrates that you're eating or anything else, that, you need all the food groups yeah. in life to balance itself out. Yeah. It just depends how much of it are you eating. Um, sometimes I find that people get too carried away by trying too hard to lose some element of it and I think you need it. Even even gluten, even wheat at a certain level. It's the processed stuff that needs to be eliminated. You know, the processed cheeses or the processed stuff that needs to be there. If real food is healthy for you, the, we are the only human beings that stress out and fuss over that. None of the, nobody in the animal kingdom ever stresses out over it. Yes. Nobody else ever stresses out over it. Why? Because their body digests it and moves it in such a way. Absolutely. Uh, I'd love to ask you a little bit about your cooking and working with spices because this is something that I think a lot of people struggle with at home when they're trying to be a little bit more creative with their cooking or find a new recipe. What guidance would you give as far as working with spices? How can people begin to become a little bit more creative and not have a disaster on their hands? Right. Well, no food is a disaster. Okay. First of all, I, I would never say to anybody that your food is a disaster. Um, I think about the basic point is uh, make a dish and taste it. And if you like it, then you're on the right track. Now, do it again. It's no different than playing music. If you pick up a guitar and you start playing music, you'll be like, oh, I like the sound of this. I do enjoy this. 
and then you will enjoy playing music and you'll get better at it. Nobody is born with um, the attitude of that, oh my God, I know it all. We, I just grew up with Indian food, I knew my Indian cooking, and I kind of combined it together with my French training in, in Austria, mm -hmm. and, I, and I put it together. Now, uh, you should understand the spices. So if you just take the, the haldi, the turmeric, and coriander and cumin and just throw it in there, your, your dishes are going to taste muddy. You need to understand. It's no different than if you play a guitar and you start playing all the strings, you're never going to have great music. Or if you had paint a palette of color in front of you and you want to paint something, if you mix all the colors and start painting, it'll never look good. You need to be able to balance it. So cooking is a little bit like creating a canvas or an art piece on your own, at your own time, and taking the time, stepping away from it, smelling it, enjoying the aromas of it and saying, yes, I'm on the right track. So what spices do we start with and how do we layer those in? Well, first of all, the most important part is onions, ginger and garlic. Like those are the starting points of it. And then you build on it with solid spices. So cumin seeds, coriander seeds, a little bit of cloves and cinnamon. Now, these are spices that produce heat from inside out. So when you eat it, it's not spicy, but by the time you're finished, you're like, okay, I can feel the little warmth in you. Yes. Because that's what your body's supposed to do with the onions, ginger and garlic and the whole spices of the cloves and cinnamon. And then you add the ground spices, so the garam masala, for example, or the, the cumin powder. Turmeric, of course, is the most important part because it gives that beautiful yellowish color <laughs> and it's a great, great anti-inflammatory yes. right now and it's really, really healthy for you. I say once a week, if, if you're not of Indian descent, uh, once a week you should definitely eat uh, some form of turmeric to it because it's super, super healthy and, um, uh, you know, and it's tasty. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, salt. What, what do you think about salt? How do you work with salt in your cooking? So salt for me should be added right at the end. You should add a little bit of salt because yeah. salt encompasses all those spices that bring it together. Now all these spices, the coriander, the cumin, the cloves, they all grow in the earth. Mm -hmm. So when they grow in the earth, they, they suck up the nutritional value from the earth. And so they have their own natural saltiness in them. If you put salt right up the front, your food is going to be too salty. So something that I learned from my mother, you make all the dishes, everything else, you taste it, you say, okay, this is how much salt I need. And then you put salt in it. Uh, you don't put salt right off the bat. And people who do it, I, I think sometimes I realize that the food is a little salty. Right. But I've always added salt right in the end. Something that I learned from my mother, again, can it be proven? I don't know if it can be proven or not. Yeah. So I'm really just hearing that it's it's the love, it's a creative process, and that it's an art form with, that you're experimenting with all of the time. Correct. I mean, it's not a computer. Yes. It's it's the opposite of computer. It's It's... A little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, and then combining your own passion and love into it creates. It's no different than creating music, no different than creating art. You need all those elements in order to create a beautifully harmonized dish. And do you, according to the time of year, change yes. what you're cooking? Can you so, for example, that? chai, for example. Right? So now it's, it's winter outside, I would put a little bit more of cardamom in it, maybe a little bit hint of ginger in it, just to give it a little bit of that feeling of it. Summertime comes, I just use fennel seeds. Okay. So the reason why you would do it is because if it's hot outside, mm -hmm. you want to sweat so that you evaporate. And once you sweat, you evaporate and cool your body temperature down. In the winter time, you want to retain the heat. Mm -hmm. So you eat spices that are not, that you don't want to sweat. You actually want to retain the heat. So you eat spices that uh, retain heat in your body. So fenugreek, uh, turmeric obviously is, is really, really good for you. Uh, ginger is really, really good for you. They, they retain that heat in your body. It could, fennel is really, really good for you. Keeps your body temperature inside, keeps you warm. Mm -hmm. And did you, growing up, learn from your mother or your grandmother? Or what, what did you learn in the kitchen at home? Anything? Or was it beyond your home that you started to learn about cooking? Well, uh, at home in India, everybody learns you know you hear it yeah. from your grandmother like oh you know so and so is pregnant so we should give her some fenugreek because her breast milk is going to be really good for her uh you know so and so needs 
uh, is is bones are hurting a little bit you know give a little extra milk with turmeric in it um so you grew up with those things i mean per se when i was growing up when i had a toothache my mom would take a little piece of clove and put it on my tooth and then but but she would dab it with a little bit of brandy so that would put me to sleep <laughs> right because it, yeah. would, it would put me to sleep so the pain would put me to sleep and it would hurt a lot and she would put clove on it um you know some like if your stomach was hurting she would put ajwain ajwain water which is like almost like caraway seeds water which is really really good for you yes. heeing is really really good for you so you hear these things you know from tales and no different than you know the indigenous people of this country or a lot of the other countries have the same hearsay like it's not substantiated sometimes but it is my grandmother did it my grandmother grandmother did it so you hear about it and you go to it so you learn those things um but then you do realize that there is a huge amount of truth to it mm-hmm. you know huge amount if my bones are hurting a little bit i'll just come in and say i just want to have turmeric rice you know one day and i know my bones don't feel if i walked a little too much or i worked in the kitchen too long um i i i feel it you know uh, so you learn from your grandparents or your parents or your, your cooks around you but you still have to create your own style yes you know you cannot not create your own style how would you define your style i think more more of who i am as a human being i i studied in austria so i'm a french chef i uh, i'm from of indian background so i cook indian food indian spices i understand but i live in this beautiful country called canada and so i'm like a perfect kitchen knife i i always say to people <laughs> i'm like a perfect kitchen knife you know i was forged in india i was beaten and uh, you know sharp in in austria but i was hardened in canada so i'm like a perfect kitchen knife you would ever have and what's your inspiration or dream or what would you like to create in the world next i think my biggest goal in life and everybody has a calling in life mahatma gandhi had a calling nelson mandela had a calling everybody has a calling in life i think my calling was to bring awareness to a cuisine and a culture of my country that i left behind mm-hmm. you know to 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 showcase that my spices my flavors my things are as complex as any other cuisine in the world that it is meant to be that uh, take me seriously and enjoy a great culture like india mm-hmm. and vikram who has been one of your greatest influences in your life I think my grandfather profoundly uh, had a huge influence on my life because he was such a joie de vivre kind of a person. He just he let you know uh, he drank a lot. You know he was he was the opposite, but he was the nicest alcoholic grandfather you can ever find. You know he was such a beautiful human being and such a great soul. He never had issues. He just dealt with life that came along. uh you know and some people will think that uh that's because he was drunk all the time but i didn't see him as that i saw him as like he gave me words of wisdom he would talk to me so much you know it's just i think those are but to be honest with you every human being that i've met in my life has had some form of a profound uh, effect on me i i do not think that you can say that one person means more than the other it's just it's a collective form of me And if you had a prayer or a hope for humanity moving forward what would it be My prayer would be um that let's make sure that no indigenous person no meiti person no hindu person no muslim person no jewish person no person of any religion is ever discriminated for either the color of their skin or their beliefs because we are all human beings. Beautiful. Uh thank you so much. Pleasure. I also wanted to bring some attention to a fantastic product that you've just come up with and coupled with a Canadian company called Kelp and it's a Namaste hand butter and this is phenomenal hand cream that has been formulated and it's natural and I actually love love this uh get this one going here uh it is so softening to the hands and i'm a little bit of a dry hand kind of person this one's not working for me <laughs> i 
have one at home that I use all the time. Mm. There we go. Finally out. Um, it's very, it's thick. Yeah. It smells great. Can you tell us a little bit about why, why are you coming out with a hand cream, Vikram? <laughs> <laughs> well, the idea behind this is this. I mean, we cook in the kitchen a lot. Yeah. So you, when you're cooking, you have your vegetables, you, you're chopping your onions and everything else. You, you cut them and then you have to wash your hands every time. Right. Now, after you wash your hands, you need to moisturize them. Now, you cannot use Vaseline or any of those products because, you know, they're they're not food safe. This is actually a food safe hand butter. That's why I call it a butter because it is a hand butter. It's something that you would need to butter your dishes up. Uh -huh. You're buttering your hand and it smells of tuberose and sandalwood is what I've added into this. And the idea is that you just put a little bit of it and then you can go back to cooking. So you can chop, you can cook, you can stir, you can taste whatever you want. You don't have to wash your hands again from the greasiness of a certain petroleum products that are being made. Yeah. So this is a natural hand cream that we came up with. Um, you know, Seema is um, an Ayurvedic doctor herself. She's aware of it. And so her and I work together on the flavors and the aromas of it. And uh, I am really, really proud of it. I mean, it, the reason why I call it Namaste is because that's where your energy is. You yes. know, we all, we've always said your finger, these are the most important things in your hand. And if you don't take care of these, how are you going to eat? How are you going to cook? How are you going to feel, touch? You know, it's very, very important. So uh, that's why we came up with the Namaste hand butter. And uh, I want you to, to keep trying it and enjoying it. Yeah, thank you. And that's with Kelp, Canadian Ayurvedic company. And I just love that it's bringing both attention to Ayurveda as Ayurveda is beginning to grow and grow in the West and also to a Canadian company doing great things. Exactly. And you know, again, she's she was born and brought up in India but she's studied and she understands what we need here in North America. And and the idea is that you, you use this butter and you blend it together with your cooking so you can go back. Because we live in North America, you know, we, we wash our hands a lot. Yeah. You know, in India, maybe you don't wash your hands as much, <laughs> but here you do. <laughs> it's true. Thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. Lovely to be with you My as pleasure, always. Namaste. 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 Namaste.